Hey everybody, Jem Schofield with Abel Cine, and today it's all things airy and lighting. We're gonna be talking about the Skylink system, we're gonna be talking about the Stellar app, so let's jump right into it. For me, it's really generally one, two, three to four fixtures that I'm using, and in those scenarios, I might be using the lights in different ways. So that brings us to Skylink, and this whole system can be bought as individual components or as a kit. The kit that we have here today comes with a Skylink base station and it comes with three Skylink receivers. And this is a great all-in-one solution if you're using multiple fixtures together. Now, the way it works is the base station is creating, if you want it to, an ad hoc Wi-Fi network. And it is also what we are using to communicate to these different receivers through CRMX, which is a very reliable and also long range solution when we wanna communicate with multiple fixtures. You can, of course, buy additional receivers if you need them in your setup. And we'll also be talking about some hardwired solutions in a moment. Now, once we have that ad hoc network connected with our smartphone or our tablet and we are communicating to the base station, the next thing we need to do is actually start to communicate to our light fixtures. And that's generally where we would use one of these or multiple Skylink receivers. So we're gonna plug this into our Sky panel. You'll see here the USB type A connector. This is what powers it from the fixture. And then if you are using an L series, let's say a Fresnel, I have a, an L5C here or a seven, then what you would do is you would actually plug this into this brick. Now, this is a pretty short cable and that run is pretty tight. You could get power up to and towards the head of your fixture, but if you need to, you can just buy a female to male extension cable to get this further away to plug it into mains. So if we take a look at the back of the base station, you can see that obviously there's the power input, we have the power switch, we have an ethernet port, we have a five pin DMX port, and we also have the link button, which will link to your receivers. So the first way we can take a look at using this base station is in an LDs type of scenario. So you're in a live event situation, maybe theater or a concert, and you have your fixtures, they are not close to where that lighting designer or lighting director is, and what they wanna do is they wanna use their control board. So what you'll do is you'll plug directly into the base station through that DMX port, hardwired, and then you would attach these receivers to your various fixtures, or another scenario might be that you're just connecting to your first fixture in the chain with this receiver. That gets plugged in, and then you are hardwiring from your different fixtures. So what you would do is you would just get five pin to five pin, male to female cables at various lengths, and you would go from that first fixture that has the Skylink receiver to the second, third, fourth, and so on and so forth, and they can control that from their board. Now that's in a more traditional LD style environment for stage lighting. You can of course use this for architectural applications as well. But my main focus for this video is how are we using this system and the Stellar app in more traditional video production and filmmaking environments. And again, my area, my scope is generally small to no crew production, but we can take these concepts and they can scale to much larger productions as well. But I do wanna just finish talking about our different connection options when we are using this base station. Now, in some scenarios, you will find that there is a inherent problem with the Wi-Fi connectivity in a particular environment. You may be in a trade show environment, you may be in an environment where there's a lot of other 2.4 gigahertz devices being used. It's very popular now to be using that for wireless video transmission and also for audio transmission. So if you are finding that you have connection problems, you do have the ability to get an adapter that will allow you to go hardwired from your smartphone or your tablet through ethernet to that ethernet port on the back of the base station. So now you have a hardwired connection, you're not relying upon that ad hoc Wi-Fi network, but then you can still connect to all of your Skylink receivers and that is CRMX, so that's very reliable and again, long range. 
Now you don't have to have 5, 10, 15 Skylink receivers. There's also the ability, as I spoke about earlier in the video, to go to one Skylink receiver on one of your units, and then you can do DMX out to in to all of the other fixtures and actually do that hardwired and still communicate through the app and through this whole system. That's obviously gonna be more cost effective. And if you're in a lighting grid scenario, then it makes a lot of sense. It makes sense when your fixtures are in close proximity to each other. Now, when we scale our productions and we go larger, that's when having multiple Skylink receivers makes tons of sense. Because in those scenarios, we generally have our fixtures further away from each other and we're doing multiple locations and multiple setups in any given day. In that situation, you don't want to be tethered with DMX cables between your fixtures. You want to be able to have the flexibility to move them anywhere you want. So if you're sitting there in a production and you've got, let's say, 10, 20 sky panels that are running, 60s, 120s, 30s, and even some 360s, you don't want to have those cables running between those fixtures and you want multiple Skylink receivers. Now you might hardwire to the base station for reliability, but CRMX is gonna be great for that wireless communication between all of your fixtures. So now what I wanna do is take you through how we use all of this stuff together using the Stellar app. And again, there's lots of different configurations, but once we connect to our lights, it's that application that's giving you tremendous control, whether you're a lighting designer, lighting director, a DP or a gaffer, in terms of how you're controlling these multiple fixtures in different production environments. So we're out of the studio and now on location and we're gonna take a look how to take this entire Skylink system and the Stellar app and put it all together, reinforcing all of the stuff that I spoke about at the beginning of the video and this being in a typical situation where we're using this as a Wi-Fi ad hoc network along with CRMX to our receivers. So here we have our base station and I'm just gonna turn that around and we are going to turn that on. And I'm gonna hold down this link button. Just press it and that's it. And then you'll see here that it's actually trying to communicate to the receivers. And once it does, you will see that that light will change to a solid light instead of a blinking light. And that means we are now connected. Now on this end, on a smartphone or a tablet, what I've gotta do is I've now gotta to connect to this ad hoc Wi-Fi network so I'm gonna go in here and choose Wi-Fi, and I'm gonna say, up oh, Airy Skylink Base Station, I'm gonna choose that. And then once that's connected and I see my Wi-Fi signal, I can step out of there and go into the Stellar app. Now before I do that, let's take a look at our setup. So let's go a little wider on a camera. And over here on my right, this is our key. It is an S30C currently set to uh, CCT 5600 Kelvin. It's going through this large modifier, this three by four. And then there's a reflector over here just for a little bit of fill. And then in my background, there are a couple of lights that are playing. The first one is another S30C with a Skylink receiver. And that has no modifier on it. It is just the diffusion panel, which is bouncing into the ceiling, which will be used to lift the ambience of the space a little bit. And then the last fixture is the L5C, the Fresnel fixture. It is spotted and it is playing off of that practical lamp, which is hanging down over that round table. And it's just gonna provide a little bit of a special on that painting to the left side of the table. So that's basically the setup that we have. And now I'm gonna go into the Stellar app. So I'm gonna go in here and create a new project. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call that house. And then as soon as I do that, it's going to prompt me to create the first scene for that project. So I'm gonna call this one, uh, we'll say house one, and we're gonna call this scene LR for living room. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add fixtures. So it's gonna automatically start to scan and it's gonna be looking for the fixtures that are in here. Okay, so it's now found the fixtures, and the next thing I'm gonna do is click Done, and I'm gonna get this dialog box that pops open, and it's going to allow me to, one of my favorite features of Stellar, 
automatically assign the DMX ranges to these fixtures. So it's going to go through that process and that might take a minute just to make sure that they're assigned. And then here I am and I am inside of my scene that I've set up and this is the basic interface. All right, now that we have everything set up, it's time to get into some of these settings inside of Stellar. Now this is a pretty deep app and can be used in many different ways for many different types of productions, but I'm gonna go through some of the typical things you should know about using it in your projects. And we can see the three fixtures on the left-hand side. This one is the first S30C, which is my key light. That's set to 5600 Kelvin, and you can see I can quickly and easily switch between that with those presets. And we have our second fixture, which is back there, which will lift the ambience. And then I have my L5C, which is gonna be for that special. So let's go over here to my key light and take a look at some of these features. Uh, first of all, when we're in correlated color temperature, we can just slide and change the overall color temperature of our light, or again, switch between 32 or 5600 Kelvin. I have my intensity over here on the right hand side. Let's take a look at what this looks like without the light on at all. Or I can have my intensity all the way up or at any setting and I can just press this little icon here and it will turn that fixture off temporarily until I press it again to turn it on. Plus minus green settings here, which I can add. And then I can just click on that and reset it at any time. And those are our basic settings when we're using the CCT color mode. When I go up here to the top middle of my screen and I press on it, we can see all of the color modes that are available for the particular fixture that you're working with. In this case, it's a sky panel. So we have CCT, RGBW, we have HSI or hue saturation intensity. We have our gels, we have XY coordinates, source matching and effects. Now, if we go back over here and we choose the L5C, we can still change color temperatures and all of the other stuff. But if I go up here, you'll see that we have limited color modes because of that particular fixture. So we still have all of these right here, but we're missing the XY coordinates. We don't have effects in there. So let's go ahead and start to dial some of this into where I think I'd like it to be. So we'll go back to this key light here. Camera set to 5600 Kelvin to daylight. Um, I wanna warm it up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that down a little bit in terms of overall color temperature. And I can either use that slider there or I can just go ahead and type in a value. So I'll just put in 4700 Kelvin. And then what I can do is I can save that as a favorite for my particular fixture. So I'm gonna go over here to the top right. I'm gonna say create favorite and I'm going to call that 4700 and I'm gonna click OK and then it's gonna have that favorite in there and then if I just go ahead and make a change, I'm just gonna dial this up to 10,000 Kelvin and I go back to my favorites, I can just press 4700. It'll go right back to that favorite and that will carry through to other projects and other scenes so it's something I can access in other projects as well. Let's go ahead and talk about that other sky panel, S30C, and let's lift the ambience in the space. And what I'm gonna do is just take the fixture intensity and bring that up. That's set to daylight right now, which is basically what's playing in the space. And I could do a similar thing. I see a couple of practicals in the background. They're a little warmer. So what if I wanted to just go ahead and warm that up a little bit, and I could. And there you go. And I could save that as a favorite as well for that particular fixture. I could also go into some of the other modes, let's say source matching. And if I go into source matching here, I could take a look and this is sun overcast. This is sun blue hour. We have, well, glow sticks are not gonna be appropriate for this particular setup, but I have them. And actually I think I'm gonna go back here to sun overcast. And there we go. Now, L5C, that's gonna be our special. Uh, intensity set to zero right now. I'm not gonna split the difference like I did before between tungsten and daylight. I think I'm gonna go really much, much warmer here. We're gonna go down closer to 3000 Kelvin and I'm gonna bring that intensity up and then you're really seeing what that's doing there. Um, okay, so now, 
I've got something and maybe I think this is going to work. Uh, I might want to bring the intensity down a little bit. I'm thinking this could be a look that I might want to bring back up. So I can go over to looks and I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to save this. So I'm going to save this as house. Let's just call this house LR for living room one. And I'm actually going to save that and say, okay. And then what I can do is anytime, and let's just go out of here and I'm just going to start to mess with my settings here. And you can just start to see some changes overall with everything that's going on. I can go back to looks at any time and I can just go ahead and apply. And now what it's going to do is it's going to go in and load in that particular look again. And you can see that there it is. And then I can create additional looks. So as you can see with both the Skylink system and also Stellar, tremendous flexibility in production. And I don't see this as being something that's just used for large scale productions. In small to no crew, two to five fixtures and being able to just connect to these using this base station, using a single Skylink receiver or multiple Skylink receivers when your fixtures are away from each other and then connecting to everything with the Stellar app just gives you so many creative choices and most importantly, speed, speed of production. So I can go into a space with a monitor up and I can get in my roughed in lighting the way I normally like it and I can bring up my favorites for my particular fixtures. I can create looks. I can audition those looks quickly and easily. And that just means that I'm going to be able to creatively do more with my productions. I encourage you to check all of this stuff out. And thanks for watching.